I'd now like to introduce Chris Morecambe up to, up to the microphone. Uh, Chris is a certified financial planner and a senior client advisor with, with Hewis and Private Wealth uh, and he's also a director of the firm. Chris's topic is investment strategies, but perhaps quite, uh, not quite what you might expect. Each Hewison client has a unique individually managed portfolio. No two Hewison client portfolios look the same and with good reason. What many of you may not understand is just how we go about devising your, your individual investment strategy. Uh, from what we look at in our research to individual stock selection and how they fit within your portfolio. So welcome Chris. Without an investment strategy, sorry I'll start that again, investing without a strategy, it's a bit like building a house without a plan. You can do it, but it's nowhere near as effective. So I'd like to spend a bit of time talking about our philosophy and how we um, go about investing because that underpins just the way in which we construct portfolios. I'm then going to take you through um, the different types of investments we use. And then I'm going to conclude by bringing it all together and just show you how we put it together to actually build a portfolio to achieve some outcomes. We construct investment portfolios to achieve outcomes, not to a risk model. So this is distinctly different to putting someone in a conservative uh, place or an an giving them an aggressive label and then using those labels to select investments. Our focus is on the long term and you just have to consider if you're 65 years of age today, on average you've got at least 20 years left to live. That's on average. So your investment strategies have to be long term. And then if you take into the considerations the family and estate planning, your, long t your time frame extends even further. To put the longer term into perspective, the graph on screen shows the Australian share market movements over the last 10, 110 years. Now, the general trend is up, notwithstanding some pretty significant drops along the way. But I put it to you that these short-term drops simply provide an opportunity for the long-term investor to, um, to take advantage of. We're high conviction investors. We back our research and our judgment. We select quality investments for the longer term so that you can benefit from their performance. As John mentioned, we buy quality investments and then we hold them for the long term, as opposed to jumping in and out of stocks or markets to make quick gains. We aim to use the least volatile strategy that we possibly can to achieve your objectives. Now, if your objectives can only be achieved with a really aggressive strategy, then we can do it, but you've really got to understand the risks you're taking. Direct investment, as opposed to investment via managed funds gives you more control over your assets, more control over your income and more control over the tax outcomes of your investment strategy. Investing directly gives you more flexibility so that you can actually take advantage of those downturns that John and I have been talking about. Ultimately, direct investment is, the, is a lower cost and more efficient way to invest. Asset allocation comes first, then investment selection. The wrong mix of different asset types can mean that your portfolio returns are either too volatile or can't achieve your actual goals and objectives that you're looking to get to. Using an asset allocation approach also allows you to rebalance your investment portfolio, which my colleague Nathan will talk to you about. So let's move on and let's look at the different types of investments that we, we use and the ways in which we select those investments. In the Australian share sector we use listed investment companies for around 35 to 50 per cent of our share portfolio exposure. Now it will depend, the mix will depend on an individual client's objectives and what they're trying to achieve. Now a listed investment company is simply a company listed on the stock exchange that owns an investment portfolio of shares. Shareholders receive reliable dividends 
and long-term share price growth. And listed the listed investment companies that we use are long-term investors. Australian Foundation Investment Company has been investing for over 80 years. Argo Investments has been just ticked over 64 years. And Milton Corporation has also been investing for over 70 years. They have a low-cost investment structure, and you can compare their underlying costs of, around, of less than 0.2% per annum to a retail managed fund which can range from 0.9 to 2% per annum. Significant cost differential. We also use listed investment companies to gain exposure to specific sectors of the share market. For example, in the smaller company, uh, very small company end of the market where research is a bit thin on the ground, particularly quality research, we use uh, Contango Microcap. Now that particular company focuses only, listed, it's a listed investment company, and it focuses only on the smaller end of the market. We then supplement the, that exposure to listed investment companies with up to 20 high quality, conservatively selected Australian shares. Now, we select these stocks from a wider list of what we call our recommended list. Now, we do have a wider list because there's different objectives for different clients. So a client looking to achieve growth because they're a wealth accumulator looking to accumulate wealth they're in their wealth accumulation stage of their life, they're going, to need, they're going to be looking for shares that are going to grow over the longer term while they're holding them, substantial growth. Whereas someone who is perhaps getting closer to or is retired is going to be looking for security of income. A dividend, a dividend income stream that they can rely on. And so they're going to be more focused on what the dividend yield of that particular company is. Oops. We filter through the, um, the 5,000 odd stocks on the Australian share market based on a strict investment criteria. And those stocks that um, make it through the, the recommended, um, th through that process, end up on our recommended list. Now we use our independent research provider Morningstar Aspect Huntley to assist us in this filtering process. We focus only on the top 50 stocks in the Australian share market, and preferably those who are offering a fully frank yield, dividend yield of 3% or more. We limit investments to those companies that are widely held. We don't want to be exposed to companies that have very large concentrated shareholdings. We aim only to invest in companies that have low debt, low earnings volatility, and low share, a history of low share price volatility. The stocks in which we invest must be a buy or an accumulate. Which a buy meaning the stock is substantially undervalued, accumulate means it's modestly undervalued. And when I'm talking about undervalued, I'm, talk, I'm referring to current share price versus the intrinsic or underlying funda <coughs> fundamental value of that sh those shares for that company. Aspect Huntley also has a list of stocks they refer to as best businesses. Now, this is a list of companies that should be pre purchased in preference to others when the price is right and should be the backbone of a long-term share portfolio. Now, given the very long-term view that is taken for this particular part of their research, we highly rate those companies that are seen as best businesses. And on screen, you see it again now, uh, is one of those best businesses. QBE is one of the best global insurance and reinsurance companies in the world. Its conservative management of its growing premium pool protects against undue risk. Now, QBE's share price has fallen quite a bit this year. Factors involved, well, the strong Australian dollar has had an impact. A larger impact has been the um, exposure to the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico earlier in the year. Now, there were some concerns about that being a very significant exposure, but management came out quite early and very clearly stated that they had a lim only a limited exposure that, to, that, to that particular event. Another impact has been that the, the, the net profit has 
fallen due to lower investment income on their premium premium pool. Now that premium pool is invested in, 93% of it is invested in short-term fixed interest investments. Now with a very low global interest rate environment, that just means that the income they're earning on that premium pool is much lower, which therefore affects their profit. But that's a sh relatively short-term phenomenon. The, un the underlying insurance business continues to be operated exceptionally well. And we see the current share price as, an, as a buying opportunity. And we've seen it before. Back in 2001, post the September 11 terrorist attacks, QBE sh saw its share price fall dramatically. It had a gross exposure to that particular event of $1.5 billion. However, after the reinsurance contracts were taken into account, their net exposure was a much lower, $252 million, which at the time equated to around one year's net profit. Now, the share price fell from over $10 to a low of $3.35. Given the strong underlying business and the fact that QBE was solvent, this was an absolute golden buying opportunity. Once again, a reference to that emotional aspect of the markets and comparing it to the fundamental underlying values of companies. This is, I know, this, don't attempt to read this, it's too small. It's, <laughs> this is, but this is a, um, a, just a snapshot research report that gives a little bit of the information to which we have access um, from our research providers and which we feed into our processes to make the selections around the different stocks that we're including um, in investment portfolios for you.